guys, today's video is another one from the past, but not so far in the past. This one is from October of 2023. It's another harvest to pantry video where we show you how we take that harvest and we made it into all the stuff that you're seeing us eat now, literally all the stuff you're seeing us eat now because it's the right year. So hopefully you sit back and enjoy. This one's got a little bit more of the harvest in the garden and the weather was beautiful and our filming was a lot better in this one. <laughs> so stay tuned till the end and make sure you comment and let me know what you think. This is just giving you a little bit of an idea of the things that we do here around the homestead. Well, it is time to do a harvest video. Well, as you saw in our garden tour on the weekend, we had a lot of tomatoes ready to go. Needless to say, they needed to be harvested and they needed to be preserved. And that is what we are doing in this video. But not just are we harvesting potatoes, we're going to harvest a few other things that happen to be ready at the same time. And we're gonna see what we can come up with to make and use all the product that we're going to harvest out of the garden today. And we're gonna weigh it because that's how we roll. We weigh everything that comes in. And I'm always curious, you know, if we weigh, bring in 120 pounds of tomatoes, what are we doing with that 120 pounds? So stay tuned through the video here. As much as I am tempted to start with my tomatoes, because as you can see here, these pineapple ones and also the Scotia ones right next door are super ripe and super ready, but I don't want them to sit out here in this heat in the bowl. So we're actually going to start with digging up some potatoes and setting them on top of the soil because then that way they get a chance to dry out. Now these are our Violet Queen potatoes. These are new for us this year, so that's why I want to get them out of the ground before anything happens to them because the plants have completely died off really, really early. That's like the biggest one we've gotten so far. And you know me, I don't love little potatoes, but at least these wouldn't need to be peeled. Maybe that's a plus. Anyways, we're gonna keep going. Each plant has been prolific, but they're just such small potatoes. We're gonna select some of those bigger guys to be our seed potatoes next year and hope that we can improve this variety to be a bit bigger like how we like it. Well, there's both rows dug up. Like I was saying, lots per plant, but they're just so small. I'm going to be very curious to weigh this and see how it compares. We put in three pounds of seed potatoes, so it'll be interesting to see. But we're gonna let these dry for a little bit and come back and gather them up after we do some tomatoes. Just a few pineapple ones in there. We didn't plant a lot of them this year either, but I have a feeling these guys will fill this bucket up pretty decently. Love Scotia tomatoes. Look at that, just beautiful. Well, next up on this harvest, noodle beans and our yellow pear tomatoes. Look at these. These are so prolific. We absolutely love these. I guess they're kind of like a cherry tomato, a grape tomato. I mean, they're quite small in size, you can see here, and uh, make amazing dehydrated tomatoes for on pizzas, things like that, sun-dried tomatoes. Look at that. Almost a full bowl. Not too shabby. That'll fill the whole dehydrator. Well, our harvest is growing. As you can see, I also picked the uh, gray sweet cherry tomatoes over there. And I got a few Scarlet Runner beans and Bama's beans. We are starting to run out of daylight, but I'm going to keep going. It's a race against the clock. So now I've added what was left of my Manitoba tomatoes that were all on the ground. The plants had really just died off. And a few more of those uh, yellow crookneck squash looking good. I'm excited because I want to get some of that grated and in the freezer for making squash bread. Well, we're on the last garden, last vegetable garden anyways. We're not doing any fruit or anything today. But behind me are the monsters that we're mainly tackling in here. We're also going to do some of the uh, Cherokee Trail of Tears beans. I'm gonna pick them green to work into a stew or something like that. So let's take a look at these San Marzanos because I'm scared as to how many are actually ripe on these. It's definitely going to be interesting to go along and pick them and see, I did bring a couple bowls because I have a feeling it's going to be more than it looks like. Well, we managed to get the bulk of it done. As you can see, two big bowls of our San Marzanos, a pretty decent sized bowl of beans. I decided to pick the last of the onions in here. All that's left is to get a little bit of this celery here. Uh, I don't like to pick too much of my leafy greens. 
um, before I know what I'm doing with them because they're something that can keep out in the garden and also be fed to rabbits and things as we need. So I don't want to waste the product. Uh, so I am going to pick some celery here because I want to put it in the dehydrator and I'm going to pick enough because I probably am going to do some sort of stew and therefore I will need some celery. I'm filthy. Well, that is the harvest portion of this video. Now, all that kind of what we brought in, uh, I'm going to say it, other than the tomatoes and the potatoes, obviously, because I've only been picking potatoes as I needed them, this is kind of a normal every couple day harvest. I mean, we're pulling in the, uh, the, the summer squash, the beans. We've been picking a few tomatoes here and there, a few potatoes here and there. I've been eating celery like it's going out of fashion because boy, we've really become celery farmers. I mean, look again. I mean, this is beautiful. I'm going to be uh, definitely dehydrating all these leaves here for um, celery powder and making celery salt, things like that. But anyways, you're gonna have to stay tuned to the end of the video to see what we do with all this. Well, we are now in the midst of processing and first order of business to get them weighed. So as you can see, got 4,119.5 grams of Scotia tomatoes here. And this is just one of many bowls to be processed. All right. So we have all that produce weighed, as you just saw on the screen there, uh, Definitely a lot of food has come in and biggest, I think most important first step is getting to use some of those juicer tomatoes because they are not keeping, uh, as you saw in some of those ones as we were cleaning them, uh, there's some spots starting to develop, but that really is the first step. We're going to uh, wash these up, core them, take off any of the bad bits, and then they're going through the juicer or food mill. Now uh, here you can see Chris hard at work on the food mill for this uh, juice. Basically we're putting the tomatoes in, out comes the nice juice, and that pulp will get run through one more time just to make sure that everything is out. But it is looking pretty good. Everything is working well and we have quite the system going. So fingers crossed at the end of this we'll have at least uh, eight liters of juice. Well, we have... Uh, the tomatoes press for our juice. We've got eight liters in there and we had more juicing tomatoes than we anticipated. So we bagged these. We're going to put these in the fridge because I'm pretty sure in another day or two, we're going to have more to harvest so we can do another batch. But that's our juicing tomatoes used up. And now it's time to uh, do something with the paste tomatoes. Prefer to do is freeze them all. So basically the plan is to bag these now. We're going to weigh them as we put them in so that we know how much is in each bag and we write those down because some of my recipes call for 10 pounds, some call for 12 pounds, so it's nice to have kind of a variety and to know what's in each bag, but roughly five and a half to six pounds usually ends up in a bag. So that's our next step and then we're going to freeze these because that makes it so much easier. Uh, when uh, you unthaw those and you get all the excess liquid out, it speeds the whole process up immensely. So we're going to get these in the freezer so that they get frozen up. Uh, usually it's at least a minimum of 24 hours. I like to leave them for probably 48 to make sure they're good and frozen. And uh, then we're going to come back tomorrow and finish our juice after uh, a night in the fridge because it's 11 o'clock now. I'm not starting to cook juice and can, but we will bring it back tomorrow when we finish all that off. It's now 11.30 at night. We have our tomatoes bagged up for the freezer. Each one holds six pounds as I usually get. And uh, we got four bags because our batch of ketchup needs 24 pounds of paste tomatoes. But I also have still almost eight pounds of San Marzano tomatoes. Now, I may give these to a friend tomorrow, but uh, if not, I will come up with a plan to use those. We shall see. But I basically took out all the ones that were ripe, ripe. As you can see, some of these were ones they'd just fallen off the vine, and they're still a little green. So these got some life left. They don't need to go in the freezer yet until we decide what we're going to do with them. So those uh, yellow pear tomatoes that you saw us pick, there they are. The kids are already almost three quarters of the way through them, chopping them up to go on to the dehydrator board here. These kids are hard at work. It's all hands on deck during tomato season. All right, so next morning we've got this juice back on the oven to boil and we're just about to boil so we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. So basically for ingredients in this 
eight liters of juice. We need one cup of sugar, one cup of lemon juice, uh, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, two teaspoons of onion powder, and then we need two teaspoons of celery seed and one teaspoon of celery salt. Now you could reduce your actual salt in this because I am using celery salt as well. We just like that flavor, but really that is up to you and your taste buds. So basically we're gonna get all these ingredients in here and then we need to boil this for 30 minutes. Now, when I do this tomato juice, I do not water bath can this. I fill it right, 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 right to the top of that rim. So there is no space for anything. And then I just jar it. Lid on. And there we are. Now, by the book, and I will link the recipe below you should actually water bath can this, but I have never done that before. And so that's, this is just how I roll. But uh, there's jar one. All right guys, so you have seen us make our seven jars of tomato juice and we ended up with a bunch of tomatoes that were left over that we bagged up. Now we're going to take these tomatoes and we're going to make some summer kind of fresh vegetable soup. Now, this is a pressure canning recipe as well because I'm using chicken broth. Now, you could use vegetable broth if you prefer that, but we like it with chicken broth. So that is our plan. We're going to use up these tomatoes. We're going to use some of that broth from uh, some chickens that we cooked up the other night that I then made into broth because no wastage around here. The other thing that is really nice about this recipe is it's going to use some of those green beans. It's going to use some of those onions that we harvested, and it's going to use uh, some of the potatoes. So. We're going to get started on this. I'm going to kind of chop everything up and then I will bring you back when I've got that finished because there's no point boring you with all those details. Another thing that we did harvest this week, actually the day after the big harvest, was our carrots out of the blue barrels. And look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? We've never grown such nice carrots. So we're going to be using some of them in this recipe as well. So I am going to weigh them. Uh, what I use and add it to the total for the uh, harvest even though it was the next day. Such pretty colors. Everything is cut up for the soup. It looks amazing, all these vegetables and so much right from the garden which is super exciting. But I'm going to go through this uh, as a single batch. Uh, so if you want to just try this recipe just to try the soup on its own. Uh, but I am going to be making four times that so that I can can it. So without any uh, further procrastination, let's get going on this. So first thing you're gonna need is a little bit of olive oil in your pan because we're gonna fry off the onions and the garlic in the pan for a little bit. So you need one cup of onions and one clove of garlic. Now, obviously we're a garlic loving family, so I've doubled the amount of garlic in this recipe, but that's up to you and what you prefer. All right, so once you have your uh, onions and garlic in the pan sauteed, you're going to add your carrots and your potatoes to this. You need one cup of cut up carrots and two cups of potatoes. Then you're going to kind of cook those off for a little bit in there with your chicken broth. You want to add a 14 ounce can, or if you make your own, a pint jar uh, for your recipe, basically. And then you want to add um, a couple cups of water. Get all this going, you wanna bring it to a boil if you're not canning it. If you're gonna can it, don't bring it to a boil, you're gonna add the next ingredients as well. But if you are just doing this to eat at home, bring it to a boil now to get those carrots and potatoes kinda of cooking a little bit before you add the rest of your ingredients. So next you're going to add one cup of corn, one cup of green beans, and your tomatoes. Now, basically you want a cup of tomatoes chopped up, uh, give or take a little bit. Uh, you know, it depends how thick you want your soup, that sort of thing. I'm going with the four times batch, so I'm going to be about a liter of chopped up tomatoes. And basically the only other ingredients are a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of tarragon, and some grated lemon zest. One thing I did forget to mention was the thyme. Uh, basically I'm using about a tablespoon per recipe of fresh thyme. You can also use dried, it just is whatever you have. But. So as you can see here, we are just starting to boil. My pressure canner is ready to go. Jars are clean. So it's time to jar this up. 
All right, so an update from our harvest. We have some potatoes still. We have not actually done much with our summer crookneck squash. We still have half that bowl of onions, a half bag of beans, and we still have that one bag of tomatoes left. So let's see what else we can make. While that is uh, pressure canning, we are going to start planning out our next thing to try and use up these products. Uh, we're going to make another round of August stew, which uses these yellow crookneck squash. It'll use up those tomatoes and beans and also most of these onions. But one thing we are going to have to get is more beans because I need six cups of beans and that's not going to make six cups of beans. So I'd almost forgotten about the celery that we had, but ideally the uh, August stew uses the celery. So we've taken all the stalks off. We're going to use that in the stew. And I've washed up all the leaves because we're going to dehydrate those to make powder and uh, celery salt for over the winter. So that used up all the celery. Well, as you know, for that August stew, we were short some beans. We only had three cups when we needed six. So my intentions were to come out and harvest these, our noodle beans, to add to the pot. But when I got out here looking at these, I found this ready to harvest. And I also found a whole lot more. Take a look. So it was only five days ago that I harvested all that food that you saw at the beginning of this video. And now five days later, I'm almost done using it, but we're starting all over again. <laughs> this is the joys of harvest season on the homestead in the middle of September. So we went out last night and we gathered up those beans that we were short for our August stew recipe. I'm not going to go through the August stew recipe again because I have featured it in a few videos recently. I don't want to bore you with the details on that, but we're going to get that canned up. It's a pressure canned recipe. And then we're going to come back to those tomatoes that we put in the freezer for ketchup. So stay tuned for that. But first we need to get this August stew made up. And at the same time, I also have lamb broth cooking because I needed to use up some more celery. So all in all, as you saw, we have another big harvest that just came in, so we got to figure out what we're doing with that as well. But first things first, August stew and ketchup. All right, so now it is time to revisit these tomatoes that we put into the freezer. And as you can see, they are completely unthawed. And you can see what I mean about the amount of liquid that comes out of these. It's perfect for things like ketchups, barbecue sauces, curries, that sort of thing. I even use this method with my marinara because I don't... Oh, I know, cat, you're starving. I even use this method with my marinara because it uh, just speeds the whole process up and we like a nice thick marinara sauce. All right, so the next step for this ketchup after we've kind of drained out a lot of the uh, moisture you can see I've left a bit in here but we're getting to the point where it's squishing the actual juice out quite a bit and I do want it to have some cook down time but basically we're just going to pour the bag into the food mill here you can see there's a lot of liquid already coming out of there I am going to actually drain that but I'm going to reserve it just in case I need it And there's one bag. It's amazing how much moisture actually comes out of these into those bags. All right, so as you can see, we ended up with those uh, 24 pounds of tomatoes. We ended up with roughly about five and a half liters of uh, the thick pasty juice. So our next step is going to be to add our onions. I pureed those as small as I could get them with my food processor, but uh, we will use the little stick blender at the end to make this into a really nice thick ketchup. So I'm not too worried if some of them are a little chunky. After they cook, it will be just fine. So once we get this boiling, we are going to be adding our spice bag. And then once it's thickened down, we will add our sugar and vinegar. So in our spice bag, we have three cinnamon sticks broke up, four teaspoons of whole cloves, 
two tablespoons of celery seed and one and a half teaspoons of allspice. And in here we've added three quarters of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So now we're just going to put our spice bag in. And now, while we're waiting on our ketchup, it's time to get these yellow pear tomatoes out of the dehydrator and keep going on our sun-dried tomato stash. I think we may have left them in a little bit long. Some of them got a little bit crispy, but they still taste great. Well, there you can see we're almost half full. And uh, as you saw from our harvest yesterday, we've got another huge bucket of these guys to go. And another thing we're gonna get out of the dehydrator is those celery leaves. These are so great for seasonings in the winter time in stews and soups and broths. So it's a great thing to really tuck away. And this year we're doing much better than we have in previous years. I mean, you could take those little sticks out of there, but we're going to be grinding this into powder eventually, so I'm not too worried about them. And they have amazing smell. Oh, I wish, I wish you could smell it. Now the big question is, will it fit in the jar? Pretty sure I can scrunch it down. One jar, all filled up. All right, so we are coming to the end of making this ketchup. We are boiled down to the point that I'm now going to add the last final three ingredients. But before I do that, I'm going to use my handy dandy stick blender and blend this down because, oh, my jars are done. It always happens, that always happens in the middle of talking to you guys. But anyways, so jars are now sterilized. We're gonna do the final steps here on our ketchup blender. Uh, we're going to blend this up because that makes it a nice kind of consistency like store-bought ketchup. And then we're going to add one and a half cups of sugar, quarter cup of salt, and three cups of cider vinegar. Now I've already removed the little spice sack and I've actually submerged it in some apple cider vinegar in a separate container to get all that goodness and ketchup off of the sack as well as any last nice little spices that are in there out. So we're going to get this going and then it's gonna to have to boil down again to that consistency that we want. I reckon it's probably gonna take about 15 minutes once I get it to a hard boil, but we're gonna kind of take you through these steps and get it jarred up. And then basically that's the end of the produce. We'll uh, come back and we will kind of put out on the table what's left that we didn't use. But all in all, I'm very, very, very happy with how much of this we did get used in the last five days. And there you can see the beautiful ketchup consistency. So it is time to jar this up. So out of that 24 pounds, we ended up with seven pint jars of homemade ketchup. So these now have to water bath can for 15 minutes and then we'll get them out and we'll show you how we've done this week. So we ended up getting just about everything used. All I have left, a little bit of the potatoes. We actually put five pounds of these away. These are our Violet Queen for seed potatoes for next year. Four summer squash, which these are gonna get pureed up, um, or not pureed, ground, or not ground even. What's that called? Chopped. Not chopped even. Grated. Grated, there we go. Those are gonna get grated and uh, put into freezer bags, a cup and a half in each one, and that's what we need to make our yellow squash bread. We do have a recipe for that, it is so tasty, so we'll link it above. But all in all, we ended up with 10 jars of August stew, seven jars of tomato juice. We did end up with seven jars of the vegetable soup, but we actually ate one already just to, uh, yeah, enjoy it for lunch. Seven jars of that gorgeous, homemade ketchup, which I will link that video above as well because it's a great recipe. And last but not least, we dehydrated those tomatoes and the celery. So all in all, that's where the food went. 
We had very, very little left over, but as you saw, we've already harvested again. And I'm going to put the weight in now of what that last harvest was. And let's see what we can make with that.